Happy Thursday, ladies. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, ladies. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, ladies. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, ladies. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Are we live? Mm -hmm. I think we're still live, right? We are. I don't hear an echo anymore, so we're going to go with it. How about that? All right. Hi. Okay, well, happy Thursday, ladies. Welcome to our latest Good Good Girlfriends chat. And I am so excited to be here. I have so many, I've been really blessed this week. I just have to say, I'm not going to say what the, all the blessings are, but I just have to tell you, God has really showed out in my life this week. And I just want you all to know I had such a praise report. And I just know he's going to bless all of you all too, because he is blessing people in this season. And I'm just super Amen. excited. So I hope you all had a wonderful week. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I hopefully you all try some of those recipes we tried last time. I've tried all of them. They're so good. That un chicken chicken salad is so good with the chickpeas. Oh my goodness. That is so good. If you haven't tried it, check out our last Good, good Girlfriends chat for the recipes and how to make it and um, try it out. But um, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Cara Dunstan, and we're going to go around the horn. And how about you, Cece? How you doing? Hi, I'm Cece. I'm Cecilia. Most people call me Cece Adams, and welcome to Good Good Girlfriends. I love it, Mrs. Adams. I'm Tanya, <laughs> uh, or TT, um, and it's good to be back with my Good Good Girlfriends. I feel like I've been gone so long, way too long. But I'm um, so good to be back in the number. And um, Car, I'm definitely channeling this season of the blessings. And I'm with you. I just thank God for all that he is doing, going to do. And um, good to see these beautiful faces. We have another Tanya, a special guest. You, she's, she's a guest, but she's joined us before. So yeah. welcome back, Tanya. Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya Leslie. Um, this is my second time being with y'all. I'm really excited to be here and chatting with you all. I got invited through my good, good girlfriend, Jeanette Harris. Hey, welcome, Tanya. And we have another return guest who happens to be Tanya Robinson's niece. Hi, Hi everyone. Happy to be back. Yes, I'm happy to be back. I enjoyed you guys the last time for some good convo. My name is Kayla. Thank you for having me. Yay. Well, hello, everyone. I am Regina Clay, and I am glad to be with my good, good girlfriends on a, I'm, I'm going to channel my cue um, on, a, on a Friday Eve. Yes. <laughs> if you're watching on Facebook, I just channeled you. But I did give you the credit. And I'm going to turn it over to our good, good girlfriend, Jeanette. Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. I am so uh, grateful to be back with my good, good girlfriends. To um, new guests, welcome to our virtual living room. We're always happy to have new girlfriends sitting on our virtual couch. Um, I, as I say, every time that we meet, we are not experts. We are just good, good girlfriends, kicking it, sharing information, loving on each other. Uh, tonight's topic should be fun. Uh, before we jump into our topic, we have a special, lovely guest. I will allow Cara to introduce our guest. And um, yeah, I'm ready to get started. Yeah, as Jeanette mentioned, our topic is going to be dating. But before we get to that, we have a beauty queen with us. Yes, we do. Yay. She is truly really beautiful too. And uh, so we're welcoming Lauren Williams and she is Teen Miss Marilyn Earth. And Hi. so welcome Lauren and share with us a little bit about what the Miss Earth pageant is about and tell us a little bit about your platform. Well, hi, I'm Lauren Williams. I'm 17 years old from Akakeet, Maryland, and I attend Duke Ellington School for the Arts in Washington, DC, where I study acting and theater. 
Um, with my title, I've been able to grow my platform Watercolor and advocate for water sanitation and hygiene through art-based expression, combining two of my biggest pas passions, since waterborne diseases is the number one cause of death amongst children under the age of five years old. So we've been able to just spread programs around the East Coast to remind kids the importance of reducing pollution and what they can do to help our waterways. Wow. So what... So tell us a little bit about what the um, overall the um, Miss Earth pageant is about. What's, you told us a little bit before we got on air. Tell, tell the audience what the pageant whole overall theme of the pageant is. Well, the Miss Earth pageant system is the international pageant system that's dedicated to advocating for um, the environment and just being the voice of environment and reminding people that we are beauties with a cause. That's the slogan. And it, we advocate for not only the environment, but also educational benefits and just do whatever we can to help our communities. Awesome. That's awesome. So how did you get involved in pageants? Is this your first pageant or were you this is I'm going on my third pageant. But it's funny because I've only been, I haven't even been doing pageants for a year. It was really something spontaneous that I did. I was, it was the pandemic and I really wanted to do something different, uh, especially going on 2021, having been in the house for a year. So I told my parents that I really wanted to do a beauty pageant. I had friends who had did them and got so much out of them. So I was like, maybe I can toss my hat in the ring. And so I came across a pageant system called the Miss Gorgeous Prince George's County Pageant on Instagram. And it was a, um, about like a three month program that taught girls about just confidence and pageantry, just a good exposure. So I signed up and ended up winning. And I went on to the Teen Miss Maryland pageant and ended up winning that one. And now in January, I'll be competing for Teen Miss Earth USA. Wow, that's awesome. So with your platform, do you have to do like any kind of projects? Do you have to go out into the community and, and present or how does that work? You just- oh, We have to do all that things. As a delegate for t um, the Miss Earth system, we're required to do a service project called our Think Global Act Local Project, which is all about things that you can do in your community to make an impact. And for me, I did my project, it was called the Fall Sweep Up. So I traveled across the DC metropolitan area to beaches and parks and just did as much many cleanups as I could. I went to my school, I went to um, my neighborhood park and cleaned up as much as I could. And we ended up picking up 13 bags of trash in a span of about three months. That's awesome. Any questions, ladies? So I don't really have a question, but I do have a comment. I love that um, this is a lesson for me um, hearing you respond to Cara's questions, Lauren, because you know a lot of times you see pageants and you think pageantry is really superficial and not um, so a community service oriented. I think what you're doing is wonderful. Um, wanted to ask, I guess, a, a couple of more questions about watercolor. Is that what you that that's your platform, correct? Yep, watercolor. So, so um, have you had opportunities to talk about? Um, that particular project um, in some of the local schools in your area? Is that something that you're looking to do? It's definitely something I'm looking to do right now. We've been able to just spread our awareness about the platform through social media, which has been mm -hmm. such a huge um, just benefit. But going into schools has definitely been the goal and the dream to just be able to spread my awareness about what we can do to help our waters. I think it's great for young, younger <laughs> children to see you and to see your advocacy around uh, keeping the environment, um, you know, healthy and clean and all of that. So um, I would love, hopefully you'll share your uh, social media um, information. I work in a school and would love to share with my students, would love for them to see a young lady of color that's doing what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Thank you, Lauren, for being here. Um, what would you say is the biggest um, mis 
uh, the, uh, the misconception that people or misperception that people have about water, um, about your platform, like not understanding necessarily that, you know, like a, a lot of people, I know for me personally, I drink alkaline water, right? Mm -hmm. um, but people, you know, of not understanding what the water system, what happens in the water system, what do you think that people may think in their mind, but what's really true? Um, if you can give an example, maybe. I, I think the biggest problem that people think is that water sanitation or contamination, it would be a better word, is a third world problem. It's something that just can't touch the United States. But if you look at sites like that talk about water sanitation, for example, the Chesapeake Bay, it has um, one of the worst gratings in water sanitation. And it's just a car ride away from a lot of people. And what we do in our communities and in our neighborhoods from even just picking up trash on the street can do so much to help with um, contamination and with just making sure that our waterways are clean. Because water is our most important resource mm -hmm. and we should be able to do whatever we can to protect it. Awesome. Excellent. How did you slide on that platform? Well, I grew up, like I mentioned, I grew up in Akakee and it has a whole bunch of ponds and creeks and lakes, which is just amazing. But when you leave trash on the street, those is, I live in an area which is one of the quickest places that pollution touches. And so when someone leaves trash on the street a mile away, my home ends up getting brown and dirty. And I've seen the way that water contamination messes up our water systems firsthand, just looking outside my window and seeing how bad pollution can get. So that was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to start Watercolor because it affected real people like me. Awesome. Wow. So, I mean, before I ask you questions about your school, I wanted to know, do you think if you, not if, when you win the, the Miss, what it, what's the final title called? The Teen, Teen Miss Earth USA. Yeah, when you win that, will that be it for you for pageants or do you think you're going to go straight to the top? That is definitely, whether I win or lose, but definitely win, that will not be the end for pageants for me. I've gained so much from this experience just in the short time that I've done it from my confidence to spreading awareness about things that I believe in like water sanitation. And pageantry is something that so many girls can get such an amazing experience out of. So this is definitely not the end for me. I plan on, I guess I plan on going all the way to the top. That's right. You're going straight to Miss Universe. Yeah. So, does, does um, do these pageants offer scholarship opportunities or what do you win other than just the title? I do win. If I do get the national title, I win a $1,000 scholarship. And um, the Beauty for a Cause, which is an organization under the Miss Earth organization, offers um, Think Global Act Local Scholarships, which are about $850 per delegate if you project gets selected, which is, I'm so amazing to um, be considered for it. That's good. What will be your major when you go to college? Are you interested in environmental science? Um, not as a major right now, it's just definitely a passion for me. I'm thinking about going into bachelor, I'm getting my, I want to get my bachelor in fine arts because I am an actress. You said that right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that that just leads into, um, tell us about the school that you attend and um, what your major is. So you said you're majoring in theatrical arts at um, Duke Ellington. Yep, I'm an 11th grade student at Duke Ellington School for the Arts that mm -hmm. I've been attending since my freshman year. So I study acting and playwriting and movement. And those um, acting has really been a huge part of my life. I've been acting since I was about maybe five years old, performing even before that. And so um, I'm so blessed to be able to go to Duke Ellington because it has definitely grown me to be the amazing um, performer and artist that I am. So with this pageant, back to the pageant again real quick, um, do you have to have, is there like a talent portion? Do you have to sing, dance or do some other type of talent or is it more, um, how's it structured? And is it virtual or in person or how's that work? 
it's in person. It's in Orlando this year. There's not a talent portion, but I just think whenever you get on stage, you have to be able to perform, especially when you're trying to walk the runway. <laughs> so my acting training definitely comes in handy when I'm doing that. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, any other questions, ladies? It's not really a question, but a statement. I just love how confident and composed she is. That is just awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Yes. Well, we wish you all the best. I have, I have one. I have one question. Okay. What What can we do as individuals to help? with the waterways. So what are some things as, as an individual can I do or I can teach my child to do um, to help with the waterways in Maryland? Well, especially in Maryland, one of the biggest things that we can do is limit our single use plastic. So like trash bags and just even, I have right here, a bottle like this, um, make sure you're recycling instead of throwing it into the trash because of um, water runoff, trash like that goes straight into our water systems and it's one of the quickest ways to contaminate water. So making sure you're making sure your trash goes in the right way, make sure you're recycling regularly. It's the small things that make the biggest difference because um, all million little small things end up making one big change. If you win, what are you gonna do? If I win, I definitely want to not only grow my platform, but I wanna be able to teach young girls the importance of leadership. With my state title, I've learned so much about not only leadership, but about myself through this leadership position that I've been in. And it's so important that young girls learn about leadership and what they can do to help their own communities. Awesome. Well, I mean, I think that was good. Yeah, anyone, I, like I said, you already know that we're all going to be rooting for you. When's the, um, when is the pageant? It is, um, the pageant starts the first weekend in January. First weekend, first week in January. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can we do it? Can we watch it or is it, is it going to be? You can watch it. Um, I'll put the links to watch the pageant will be in my Instagram. My Instagram is Teen Miss Maryland Earth, and on Facebook it's Teen Miss Maryland. Okay, we'll put that in the um, so in the chat so we can all watch that. So and okay, this is a more superficial question, but do you have a gown yet? Did you already design your gown? Who designed it? How do you, how do you have a gown? gown. Um, I do have a gown, the designer is Sherry Hill, which I'm really excited to wear. Um, it's a gorgeous gown and it spent weeks picking it out. So I'm really excited to show it off. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. I know you're gonna, I mean, you're gorgeous anyway, so. Yeah, she is. You. Yeah, so I know you're gonna be, you're gonna kill them, knock them big. You're gonna do a great job. Just know we're gonna be rooting for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Sharing in our virtual living rooms. And when you win, Will you come back to Good Good Girlfriends and tell us all about the experience? I will definitely come back. Okay, good, for sure. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. If you'd like, you can stay. If not, we completely understand. We're just thankful that you spent at least a little time with us tonight. Thank you for having me on the virtual couch. This is yes, so Thank you. <laughs> Take care. You too. Okay. That's awesome. Anybody here awesome. been in a pageant? Any anybody done a pageant before? Nope. Mm -hmm. I have. Oh, Regina. Regina, you can pa Why didn't you tell her? Well, Miss Clay, tell us about your pageant. Oh, I mean, it was a long time ago. Did you win? <laughs> oh. Uh -oh. Um, yeah. And and it's interesting that she said she's been in it a year because most people, I mean, I've watched several young ladies who are in organizations with me and they've been in pageants for a long time. Like it's a long, I mean, it's a pro like it's a long process. And so I did it that one time I didn't, you know, I didn't win or get close. And I was like, okay, like, it's, I'm ex it. it's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah, I can imagine, awesome. I can imagine the expense. So shout out to the Williams parents on that expense. 
<laughs> Shout out to them on having such an amazing daughter. Yes. Wow. Her, that her was, platform is like, amazing. I'm thoroughly impressed with her. She very poised. Very. Uh, yeah. But love to see what she's like in 10 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Give her some time. Mm-hmm. And she happens to be a twin, so there's there's a two of them. So oh, wow. Wow. Cool. wow. Okay. Dynamic. Two dynamic daughters that are taking over this world. So that's right. Cool. Yeah. So all right. Well, ladies, let's get to our subject for the evening, which is dating. This should be interesting. So <laughs> my face. <laughs> Who wants to? Both Tanyas will have a lot to say. So we start with, how about we start with, before we jump into whatever these two are about to say, why don't we start with Kayla, who can give us a great story to get us started. How about that? And then we can jump into other experiences. <laughs> Correction, the story is a mess, okay? It just has a a, a decent ending to it <laughs> because oh. dating is well I think dating can be messy for everyone especially if you're like an online dater like if you do the apps or whatnot if you're someone of that nature um I was someone who did both like I would go out with my girls and I don't understand why people think that's better. I understand it might make you more comfortable, but I've honestly met more crazier people in person than online. Um, but I, you know, would use like Tinder or Bumble, which was comfortable for me because I grew up in a social media era anyway. So it was fine. But also, to be honest, I just wasn't that confident to just really connect with the guy face to face at the time anyway kind of made me feel a little bit more comfortable to do that but then you you see what the options are on there and you just I don't know I don't know it's, it's a mess um so you know I have my ups and downs and you meet all these people and you go on all these dates and I didn't even meet my fiance which we met on tinder I didn't even meet him until um I was done with it like he he tells people all the time how I was just not even responding to him and I was just like yeah it is what it is I was kind of over I had just lost weight I had cut my hair so I was like you know we we're not locking this down okay I'm (laughs) I'm where I need to be you know and someone someone jinxed me it was a good jinx though but someone jinxed me I had posted a picture of me cutting my hair and she was like oh your husband coming and I was like girl no but yes but no and so that's how we met but it was just a lot of up and down left and right you know so if I could give advice to anyone who is dating and using online dating or considering it, know what your intention is, whether that's just, you just wanna have a little fun and fool around, or I'm looking for something serious because where we are, whether you're in person or you're online, you are gonna attract the frame of mind that you're in. It does not matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to be real with yourself about that. And it wasn't until I was like, no, I'm seriously wanting to date someone. And I would like tell them straight up, like they would say hello. And I'm like, nope, if you're not trying to marry me, leave me alone. You know, like just (laughs) leave me alone. But it really does filter out. And you know, I wouldn't do it in a weird way, but it really does help you filter out and keep you centered on what you are trying to do. And so that's online, in person, blind date and whatever you're doing you have to have your intention set. You have to know what you want the other person to provide. It does not matter. And it doesn't matter how old you are either. That's all. I think that's always going to be a thing. You're going to always need to know what you want from the other person. So, so. You, said you, so you said you met him on Tinder? Yes. Yes, I did. Nice. Yes, I did. And we were messaging for months. We built a friendship first. Um, it wasn't like there's a stigma about um, dating online or through social media that everything is so fast, which it can be, but that also is set by the intention that you have. 
you know, that you're going to pursue things differently based off of what you're looking for. Um, but we would just hang out. We met each other's friends first. It wasn't, we didn't even really date until months afterwards because we both knew what we were looking for and what we wanted. So it was definitely a different experience. And I'm glad I finally responded to him because again, I was ignoring him. And I know God was like, girl, you didn't ask me to send you somebody. And I done sent them and you sitting here ignoring him. And we do that all the time. So you got to just be open, but be focused, if that makes sense. All right, I'm writing that down as a note. You should be open, but be focused. Yes, you got to be open to what comes because it don't always look like what we want it to look like. That's what I mean by be open. That's really what I mean by be open because they, they got, you know, maybe they ball and you thought he was going to have 360 waves. Maybe, maybe they're sure you don't know how to dress. And you expected. Oh, oh, that'd be the one. Oh my goodness! Yes, <laughs> right. Six, yes, dark chocolate. It, it, it's right. Hmm. You just never. You got to be open, and you got to get to know a person for who they are, and that also comes with knowing yourself. I would just tell anyone before you date, you kind of just got to sit down with yourself. Like, would you date you? Because beforehand, I wouldn't have dated me if I was honest. I just really wouldn't have. But until I was ready to actually be open and dated a little bit of everyone to see what is it that I really like based off of what I think I look good with or would be good with, then I ended up finding someone different and it just made for a better situation for me. Nice. I just want to welcome our good, good girlfriend, Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Adrian. We just started, Adrian. We just started talking about dating. We had a beauty queen on earlier, so we're just getting started. We just started oh. sharing. Okay, hi everybody. Hi, hi Adrian. So I'm gonna jump right up in here, right behind <laughs> my Kayla, because first I have to put this out to so it'll be forever saved. We love Jeremy. She was blessed <laughs> with a good one. Um, so we're yeah. grateful and thankful for that. Um, dating for me, you know, it's actually been kind of interesting. It's had its ups and downs. I think at this point, um, everything Kay Kayla said, I use those, that, those, that same word, being intentional, being deliberate, dating on purpose, being very clear, communicating exactly where I am. So I've said a lot of no's because once I say this is where I'm at, and they come back with stuff that just don't match what I just said, that it's, it's nice meeting you. And it's a straight no, it's a straight block, it's a straight whatever. Um, and I think from my last experience and my last relationship, um, definitely taught me to really just be there. I, I'm always kind of been direct, but I'm really direct right now. It's like, that's just, that's my no is real hard, real straight real right at you no um the online dating to me is no different than an in-person dating because you meet crazies wherever you are so mm -hmm. in person online um but it's just about your you you know how comfortable you are um i guess being of the older seasoned i would say generation um who who you know didn't grow up in technology, but we were the start of it. And, you know, I'm very technically um, inclined and, and savvy. So um, I think I, I kind of like the online dating and the whole, it's, it's just that when, even if when you're intentional with some people you meet, and I've met some nice people, um, I've met some really horrible people. Um, and, um, the nice people just weren't a good connection, but some people don't come with their intentions or communicate even when you're communicating. They're not, they send their representatives, they tell you, you know, they feed off what you say and then tell you things that, and then a week, a month later, you looking like, but that's not what you said to me on so and so, because I don't forget. Um, I take notes. You you in a book, and I'm taking notes because when you come back now and you tell me something, 
and it doesn't match what you told me two, three weeks ago, I'm calling you on that. So I think for me, that's just kind of been the hardest thing. And I come with a lot of energy. And I, I just, I'm just, me, me and God just talk. I was like, Lord, is there anybody out there you molding with the same kind of energy that matches my energy? Because I come with a lot. And I know that. Kayla said, know who you are. Okay, I know who I am. And my energy, you know, it, it's, I'm a TT a lot. Um, so I just stay in prayer. Um, I told God he's going to have to set up, you know, set fireworks off or something to give me a sign when he send them. Cause I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm going to see him when you, you know, when he send them, cause they, it, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I heard the same thing from you and Kayla. And I've said this to um, some, some good, good girlfriends before that sometimes people or, you know, nice men will come in your path and you just aren't even open or or you aren't even aware of it and, and you just said you would need fireworks Kayla you said something similar to that like you need to be open and um aware of it and I just think that's always a good thing to remember because I think we do meet people but we don't like somebody I think Kayla you made a point they may not come in the package that you're looking for and so they go you, you know you're looking right past them um, but yeah, just being open, I think is a good point for, um, you know, to keep reiterating, just be open and don't, don't overlook something that could be right there in your face, trying to get your attention. Yeah, and open, that's, the, that's the honest uh, truth. Cause I overlooked Marcus 101 times. I seen him, I'm like, hi, and kept running until my aunt said, somebody got a crush on you. And if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't have. I mean, you know, I saw him and spoke to him, but, you know, just not like to go out on a date with him. So you have to be open. You have to be aware of your surround. Now your surround is like, pick up on little clues or little things. So sometimes it's little subtle hints that somebody may be giving you and you look right by. Because I definitely was like, not knowing every time he was talking to me and I would run into the Ravens game that he was trying to get my attention. But I had my mind focused on getting to this Ravens game on time or, you know, getting somewhere I could watch the Ravens play instead of on, on him. So, yes. Look yeah, like, uh, looks like Tanya has her hand raised. She has something to say. Well, I have a question. How many people on the call are dating, trying to date, starting to date? Like, I'm just curious around, like, who on this call is in the dating pool? I date my husband, so I, I, I still date him. No, you're talking about the single women. That don't right. count. Single, but not, not dating. Because some single women don't want to be dating, but you specifically asked who is in the dating pool. Dating pool. Yeah, well, that's true. That's I'm true. not in the dating pool, but I should put my church thing up. I need to be in the dating. Pool. Look, look, look. That's, right. that's my question, right? Because I think that there's like a long. Um, runway before you actually start dating right like you could be in a, a feeling of like I would like to be dating I would like to start meeting people but there's a for me at least like there was a long runway before I felt like I was ready to date and you know going on um all of the apps like it's so overwhelming it's so underwhelming it's you know it took me a while right to get kind of into the uh, game. And, you know, many, like I keep sticking my foot in and then pulling it back out, sticking it in, pulling it out. So it's, you know, I wanted to kind of put that out there too, that like um, to actively be dating, like, and I feel like I could say that now that I'm actively dating, but there was a long time where I wanted to be dating and I wasn't. And, you know, I think there was a lot of like fear, a little bit of shame, um, because, you know, like it used to be easy. When did it get hard like this? You know, then you're kind of looking at these people online and you're like, should I like you? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> is the reason that I'm dating now because I've been too picky? Like, am I supposed to like? So there was a lot of, um, I had to go through a lot of my own personal baggage, which I'm still sorting through, but, you know, to feel kind of ready to be out there in a positive way so that I could meet to uh, Kayla's point and Tanya's point, right? Like, so that I could be kind of um, in a positive energetic space so that I could pull that kind of energy. I'm going back to another point that Kayla made up front about you really need to know yourself. And I think that 
you just made that point too, Tanya, that you really have to get to know yourself, I think. I mean, this is my own opinion as we offer up on our Good Good Girlfriends show. But I really feel like as people, you need to know yourself before you can start dating successfully and find, you know, figure out a good match because or else you're just out there floundering and just meeting people. But spending that time, and that's not always easy. I mean, mm -hmm. I have said this before. I've spent, I spent time doing that when I was 33. And it's not always easy to look at yourself, figure out who you really are and make sure. But then you get to the point where you do that and then you can figure out who you are and you eventually will like who you are and that reflects in when you meet other people. So, but I think it's important that you do, that everyone should try to do that at, at some point in their life if they have it, so. I, that's crucial, because um, I think um, coming out of my last relationship, I had to really sit and do a lot of self-reflection, a whole lot. I mean, I shut it down. I wasn't, I was like, I need to be real quiet. The only yeah. person I can really talk to right now about anything is Jesus. Right. Other than that, I, 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 I love my good, good girlfriends. I love my friends. I love my sister. I love my mom, my niece. But I needed to shut myself down because I, I, I saw my, I looked at myself and I'm like, you know, I have to think about and take accountability for my actions in it. You know, wasn't no blame on him, but I had to sit and really look at what I allowed. And then and reflect that, but that's not what you wanted. So why were you allowing that? And so to sit in that was was very difficult. Um, was very very difficult. But I'm grateful that I took the time. And then once I came out into a good space, and then was ready to open, you know, um, with my sister, who's like my accountability partner, my niece. I mean, my niece is what 26, but mm -hmm her maturity and her um and she's so grounded um and her perspective i've always respected her perspective and so having those people around that tell you the truth not what you want to hear mm -hmm. was um was very eye opening for me and now now i say and i say i'm i'm in the pool and i'm dating but i'm I'm just, Lord, you're going to have to send them. I'm not, I'm just being me right now. I'm in a season of just being Tanya, doing her, whatever she like. If you drop in my DM, if you send me a text or call, I decide now what I really want to deal with. And, you know, he going to send smoke signals like Tanya, that's him. Answer the phone because it just might not happen right now. But I also want to make a point to um, the other Miss Tanya when she was like, I want to put my foot in. I want to take my foot out. That is the joy of dating. Like, I think as women, sometimes we forget, like, like, yeah, we want to get married. Yeah, we want a man. You know, yeah, we want to have to change uh, the batteries and the smoke detectors and take out the trash, all that good stuff but have fun with it. If you don't like them, I've been on dates where I was like, I am not going to see him again. I'm going to make that very clear, okay? We will right. not be hanging out again, but we're going to have a good time because I got cute. I'm out here. <laughs> and so we're going to have fun because I'm not going to go home and be pissed off because this date was terrible. And then you just don't want to date. You know what I'm saying? Unless he's just like a complete jerk and you cannot do anything with that. If you can't, swing that thing your way to where you have a good time, then you're going to feel like, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? Because we as women put so much pressure on ourselves and you have more power when you're dating than we sometimes remember. Like if you want him and he's fine and he's over there and you dress and you feeling good, you can go say, hey, you know, like you can say, hey, now I won't be doing too much like buying him drinks and stuff. I know women who do that, but <laughs> if that's your jam, go ahead. I don't know. But you can put yourself out there and whatever makes you feel comfortable. Like dating is not a one size fit all. It's whatever you want to do. And so if inching your way out there is just 
maybe I'm gonna swipe and like pictures, but I'm not gonna message. If that's how you have to get yourself back out there, definitely do it. But I always tell like all my female friends, like take all the pressure off of dating. It is not as serious as we're kind of raised to believe it is, but it is. Like you have to make a serious decision, but it, the process doesn't have to be so serious, I think. I agree. I mean, I think that once I started having fun, like this summer, I had a list of things I wanted to do on dates, you know, like where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do so that I didn't have a shortage of like, oh, what do you want to do? So like I went sailing because I wanted to go sailing. I went to restaurants that I wanted to go like I and I purposely did that because I wanted to know that at the end of it all, at least I had a good time, right. you know, like no matter what. And that changed, you know, that changed the game so that now that I I am having fun dating. It does feel different, but I remember like for a while, it just, you know, it took me a while to kind of get to that point of um, feeling that I could have fun. Like it just felt like tedious. <laughs> tedious. Yeah. Like work. Yeah. Yeah. So how, you know, Tanya, like, how did you get to the point? Like you said, you had to inch your way there and sort through baggage. Like, how did you get to the point where you're like, all right, I'm just going to do it like so Tanya and I went to college together and like she said it was never this hard right it was a toss-up fun in college and dating was not you know an issue and so then you become a grown-up an adult life happens different things happen in life you get to a certain age and you're like I have to do what I gotta get online that's weird I'm not doing I'm older <laughs> So I'm like, hmm, I'm not getting online, you know, and my niece would say all kinds of crazy things to me, like, auntie, you're going to continue to be sitting on your couch with that mindset. But it's taken me a long time. I want to date, but it is the idea of online dating, like, I'm still, and we had this conversation last year, I think, um, with Tanya TT was sharing some advice and I was still like, mm -mm, I'm not there yet. <laughs> so how do you get there? I feel like the person who's standing on the edge of the pool that the word is a little bit cold. I keep like, oh no, I'm going to do it. And I haven't jumped in the pool yet. Let's you jump. You got to jump. Sometimes yeah, somebody yeah. push you in there. Mm -hmm. and we need somebody push you in. Yeah, yeah we got a right. yeah, yeah, Maybe, like, maybe somebody you. has to set up your profile. Right. 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 Like, Regina will set up your profile online. Help her out, yes. You need a, people um, will be messaging me and then I'm like, I don't have a profile, but <laughs> yeah, you need an online dating accountability partner, Jeanette. So I don't, I mean, I'm not an online dater, but what I would say that everyone has said that having fun with it is important, you know, Jeanette. So maybe even that mindset, um, you know, I love what Kayla said, you know, have, I mean, short of, you know, you coming into, and even if you're not online dating, I didn't, I didn't have that experience. I'm very fortunate how I've connected um, with a partner that I was with before. Um, but I would just say, you know, having fun with it, I think is key. And short of it being, you know, somebody that is just absolutely horrible either to you or that experience, then, you know, sometimes, you know, right off, you know, this is maybe the next time, maybe not, but just enjoy it for that one time. And if that's it, then I had a good time with some great conversation. And um, I think that, you know, that that open communication and being honest, because you don't have anything to lose. If you're feeling like this is just not it again, then it's okay to say that, but just, just enjoy that time, you know? And so this person you get to go sailing with, that's fine. You had a great time sailing and next time you sail with somebody else. Right. I, I, I like that. Ta I, I like that. Tanya's Tanya. list. Yeah, I like to, the idea that Tanya said she made do. a list of things to yeah. do or things she wanted to do. So that mm -hmm. might be a I start like for you. And then just hang out with somebody and do those things, like she said. And if you don't like that person's company, then you know don't go give them a second chance. Move on to the next one. And Jeanette, I noticed when I started doing things just by myself and getting out there, I started meeting different people. Not even I'm just good so doing life. stuff by myself. I like I enjoy my company. I think I'm funny and I have a good time. With <laughs> but I mean, doing yourself and do different experience, but be open to the surroundings and who's around mm. you. Mm -hmm. you know it's one thing to be I'm doing this for me and I'm out there going for me but when you say okay these are a list of things like Tanya said that I like I, I'm just going to do these things you get you expose yourself to a different wow. kind of people yeah I mean the kind of man that may be out sailing he might not be 
over here uh-huh. doing something else. So yeah. it opens your, you know, the pool to the, the um, opportunity to meet different people. Because it could kind, of, you kind of can get kind of stuck. Yeah. You know, meeting. I mean, because that was one of the things I, I, I struggled with when I was still in Maryland, in Baltimore. Dating was tough for me because I was like, I know everybody. So every time I, even somebody I didn't really know, and then we went out dating, we started talking. It was like they knew okay. somebody that you knew somebody. Uh, that you knew somebody. Well, my cousin from down, the, you know, and it just was like, and that's when I started. It was like, okay. I, I got online dating and I'm like, I'm my search area. I'm going from to Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and I'm going to Virginia, North Carolina, because I, I don't want to date nobody in Baltimore because it was just in Maryland, it was just too close. Um, so, you know, that's just an option as well. Um, you know, just really thinking about stepping out your box. But first, we got to get you out and get you, you know, get your mind right to be like, I'm going to stick my toe in and do that. <laughs> But then just, you know, expand and the opportunities to maybe meet a different, different people. Mm-hmm. Has anybody ever used a dating coach or a matchmaking service before? You use a dating coach? Oh, please tell me about that. That might be an option. Come on, Virginia, you've been holding back on me. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, yes, I had a, I have a, I, well, I still call her my relationship coach to this day. Um, I actually have two, actually. One is a male, one is a female. Um, And um, basically what she helped me see is mainly about me, right? It was mainly looking at myself. Um, One of the things that she said that, that, that I have said, and Tanya, I, you and I have the same energy. I, you know, And I used to say that saying that I'm a lot and there's going to, it's, it's going to take a a lot for a person to be with me. That is not the, the saying that I need that, that I needed to be saying, because then I'm not attracting that person, the person that's coming to me, they're going to accept all of me as I am, whatever I am, however loud I talk, However, over, however busy I am, right? Cause I, I get that a lot from guys because you, most of you all on this call know, mm-hmm. I have a meeting like two, three, four times a night. I'm at this event, I'm at that event, you know? And when a guy says to me, oh, you're just too busy for a man. And I'm like, he usually is getting the ax after that. Cause <laughs> what? No, Absolutely. don't, don't, don't say that. Like. <laughs> you know, um, so I, I think with the relationship coach really helped me focus on myself and um, focus on um, basically, as you all have said, having fun in dating and not looking at, even though the end game, Kayla, like you said, like I'm very clear where I'm going but I don't have to start on date one that this is going to be my man for life. And I think sometimes we do that. Like we're like, oh, I don't know if he's husband material. Oh, he's not husband material. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what? Just go out and be friends. And then I, and you know, and, and, and I think things develop. So a relationship coach was helpful to me for me to see And one of the things that she did is I did a a relationship vision board. So as you list the things that you want, um, I cut out pictures and put them on a board. Mm -hmm. I still have that board somewhere. Um, And then also she said to me, she said, what do you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. Many times as women, we always want to say, oh, what they bring to the table, what they, well, I'm not dating what they, but what are you bringing to the table? So Regina, I think you raise a good point. I remember having a conversation with my brother who's two years older than I am. And um, he was saying, you know, how women say, you know, I want, you know, I want the tall, dark and handsome, the lawyer, whatever. And he said, so why can't I want those same things? You know, he was saying, often I hear a woman say that. So can I not say I want the, you know, tall, dark, stately, you know, 
attorney as well. And I said that you have a good point. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, when we say what we come with, I would imagine that, you know, when we talk about brothers, you know, they come to the table with what they have and who they are, you know, looking for um, acceptance as, as we are ourselves, you know, as we are looking for them to accept us as we are. So we have to look at, you know, well, we, you know, we're taking them just as they're, they're taking us. Yeah. So we have a few comments. I'm gonna go ahead and start reading them so that we can keep up. Um, our good girlfriend, Bernita. Hi, Bernita. Hey, Bernita. Hey. Said, hey. Don't shut out what's different than you. And then our good girlfriend, Andrea, who's been on before too, she said, Bernita Archer Bellamy, sis, my personal hang up, my personal hang up I do. As a woman that is, Six one and loves wearing heels. I need that height. Oh, I think they're talking. I think because Andrea said earlier when someone said describe like where your package might come in, and she's like right. not shorter. So she was talking about she doesn't want someone shorter. Um, and so she also said for me as an athlete and a very strong personality and presence, I have found that tapping more into my femininity has changed what I'm attracting and I like it. And then Tanya's sister and Kayla's mommy said, LaShawn said, that part right there, Regina. I don't, I don't remember which part that was though, so I don't know. <laughs> that point that you made was a good point, Regina. She agreed oh, with me. Okay. And then- um, Probably the part about the being a lot. I'm a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, I know that I am, but I mean, oh well. Oh, well, I mean, oh, I, I, mean I totally agree. I mean, that's the whole point. Whatever we come with, wherever we are, the person for us is going to be that person that can seize us for who we truly are. Yeah. And nothing we do, you know, is a deal breaker for them in the sense that they get us. They take right. us just as we are. As we are. Talking to Tanya, Moody Tanya. Yep. Yep. Um, controlling Tanya, stubborn Tanya, you know, Tanya is sarcastic, funny, you know, they, they take it all. Um, and it's just finding that, you know, just being able to connect with that person that can take you and where you are and you take them where they are. Um, I, Marcy, so Regina and I are in this group, Facebook group together. We just realized it, I guess, not too long ago. We've both been in about a month. And it's a, a, a Christian professional dating private group. It's very interesting. Very. Very interesting. Very. Um, but one of the things that I noticed, because I, I really was getting ready to get out the group because some of the posts sometimes just, they take me to zero to 60. And one of the things I noticed, I, I know we all have our preferences, but the way that some people just state these you know, I, sometimes I feel like we don't get out our own way because we're so stuck, as we said earlier, on this, that. And I was and I was in that box and my sister came up with this code word because she would be like, I'd show her and I start talking to her and she'd be like, she'd sit back like this and she'd be like, familiar. And that was her <laughs> code word to say, you, you just going down that same path, picking and choosing, yes. you're going to get the same results. So then I had to sit and talk to myself and say, okay, Tom, you being real insane because you, you know, you're doing the same thing and that's why you keep getting the same results. Um, but I, you know, Regina, you're in the group. It, it, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, your it is quite interesting. Um, I think one of the things for me, you know, and I know it's Facebook, right? And so Facebook, <laughs> Uh, required, would not required you, but the idea of Facebook is that you see people's faces, right? That's the whole idea. So there is a lot of times in that group where people are like, oh, let me see the pictures of all the people over 50, you know, and then all the guys over 50 or something, and then everybody posts. And then what I begin to look at is the response, like, oh, you, like, <laughs> I've seen people post, right? And before I even look at the comments, I'm like, oh, he, this person probably got 500 comments. And sure enough, mm -hmm. right? 
Tanya, they yeah. got 500 comments, right? Yeah. Right. Then another person posts and they got 10. And it's so it's so predictable. It's, it's so predictable. It, it, and I'm it, like, it, oh my gosh. It, it and is. actually, I was in, I was um, whoo, I you saw my question that time, Tanya. Oh yeah, no, so because that it started with asking about men, man right. women. Because this woman asked about, she said, uh, because she posted a picture of Keon, um, I forget his last name, but he's engaged to Shawnee O'Neal. And she she said, she said, what men picking women of the world or something like that. Outside the church. Outside the church to be the first lady. And I was like, okay, but not all, everybody in here is not a male pastor. I said, so what about the females? So then she said, I could comment. So then I put another um, post up about female pastors and would Woo. men be Woo. willing, because this is my, I mean, every, most people in here know that I am a pastor. So this, this is my, this is my life. Mm -hmm. um, there are men who do not support uh, women pastors and they would not date a woman pastor. It's, and it became clear to me in the comments oh, of how yes. that was going because they said that, oh, are you gonna try to control my life? I was like, I didn't even say anything. And, and, and actually I said, to, I said to somebody on a post, I said, I have been a single mother for 15 years. I don't want to control not one other thing in the household if I can absolutely help it, because right. I've done it for 15 years. Right, that part. Right? So just in terms of the Christian um, structure, right? I don't want to control, but if I'm the pastor of the church, I'm the pastor of the church. And, mm -hmm. and you know, that doesn't mean I'm, the, I'm going to be in charge at home too. And people were trying to imply that that's what I was trying to say. And so I was like, oh, Lord, I, look, I stopped looking at it because I was like, it's too much. So I do have a question. A point for, that brings up a good point because I notice when it comes to dating, men can be very like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like if you have, if you're a strong woman and I think it's why most- Or chauvinistic? I don't know if that's the word, okay. but I, I noticed that a lot of y'all are saying like, I can be a lot, I can be too much. And I would love to know where we get this idea from, because last time I checked, they a lot too. They just different a lot, you know? So why do we hold on to this? Oh, I'm a strong personality or, oh, mm -hmm. I have to have, you're a woman. Mm -hmm. Unless you choose not to exude your feminine energy you're feminine you know what i'm saying and that's a choice usually unless you decide to change some things you're going to naturally do things that attract a man but part of the problem i think is one women we know we have so much competition and so because there's more men there's more women than there is men number one but two men if they feel like you're a strong business whatever or you have a dominant job or whatever that you don't know how to separate. And a lot of men are so confused that we don't want to be dominant everywhere. Half of the time, we don't even want to be dominant at work. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, we just got to make the choice and okay, keep well, it moving, but we don't want to do that. <laughs> so I just wonder where men get the, like where and why women carry that. Like if someone, if a man tells us we're a lot, we do not let that go. Why is that? Well, we got to let it go because I'm and I'm OK with being a lot. I'm OK with being me. If that's a lot to you, then that's that's fine. Um, but I think it's 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 rooted in when you um, meet or connect with the wrong people and they say those things to you, then that's where it resonates. Um, but, you know, there's always all these conversations about alpha females, what everybody's perception of what that means and what that is, is different. Um, you know, and I, and I know at our age, and I think um, it was Cara who said something, or maybe Jeanette, um, Jeanette 
um, you know, I'm the Tanya TT at 52 is not the same as the Tanya TT at 23 when she got married. So um, I'm now molded and shaped by all the experiences that I've had. So I've evolved, still evolving, still overcoming, still becoming. Um, but some of the, you know, so some of the things that I've experienced, I think, um, are set in me. And, you know, once you get, like I said, sit back and got comfortable with me, yeah, I am a lot. I, but I'm okay. I don't say that in a negative way because I'm okay with everything that is a part of me. Now I'm clear that the person for me is going to accept all of me, all of the lot that I come with. We all, I mean, we all come with a lot. We all come with something. It's just all different. So I, I don't, it's not, you know, I'm not utilizing that as an, in a negative way because I'm, I'm cool with who, you know, TT is at this point. Oh, for sure. I'm just saying how, like, if you were to say that to a guy, like, you, you say that to me, I'll be like, girl, me too. You know what I'm saying? I'm a lot right. too. Right. You say that to a, a man, they're going to be like, what you mean? Well, I, you a lot. You well, know I'm what I'm saying? Like, it, 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 and so I wonder why we hold on to that or even where that comes from to even feel like you're a lot. But because cause you like to, you know, you might have a hyper moment but you also are a very chill person yes i might want to go here to this social event but i also want to sit down that's a human thing and so why do we have to be labeled as a lot because you already know i'm a woman you know i might wake up tomorrow and not want to look at you just get over it okay if you chose to be around you have to get over it because one day you're gonna wake up and look at me the same way you know what i'm saying so why do we get labeled as a lot because it's a little bit easier for us to flow through our feelings and things, I think, or how we really are in that moment. Because women, we usually show where we are that day, that minute. And if it changes in 10 minutes, okay. But right now, I'm sick of you, or I love you, or whatever. And maybe in 30 minutes, I want to go on this date. But you got to get over it. Why do we get labeled as a lot that's to the point where it makes point. us nervous right. to that's, be around that's, men? Yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. That's a, that's a very good point. Where we just need to be. Mm -hmm. Just be. I, I just am who I am. Exactly. As Period. we all are. Yeah, I don't, I don't use the term, you know, I'm a lot or, I, you know, I mean, we are who we are um, based on you know, um, a birthright based on how we were raised, based on environment, based on family. Um, and we are who we are. And I think that's for us as well as for the men that we encounter. Um, and again, we encounter different um, people in our lives, whoever we're dating, and we determine based on who we are, whether that other person works for us or that or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, it's really okay. And I think coming to terms with that, I think for me over, you know, having evolved through the lifespan of, you know, dating and marriage and um, dating again, um, you know, you just get to a place where you just learn to appreciate the other person. I think, um, Bernita, what was Bernita's comment about something? Um, what did she say, Cara, about um, different or appreciating um, a different person or a difference Opposite. of person. Opposites attract. So. Right. And sometimes absolutely they do. I mean, and not maybe not everything about you opposite, but sometimes they absolutely do attract and, and that can be good and fun too. So I've just learned to appreciate and have a good time. I laugh every day in my relationship. And oh, for me, that that's awesome, Marcy. Every day. I don't get through a day where now, and I might be the one that's doing the crack up, I'm just saying, but <laughs> that's you know, awesome, I, Marcy. I can, I can say, and so I've appreciated that in this part of the journey, having been married before, um, you know, lost a, and, and I should say as, as a widow, um, and then coming into a relationship with the, the partner I have now who I dated like 40 years ago. And so um, I'm just appreciative that, that we just laugh every day and we have a good time. And, you know, and it's, and it's all good. And wherever God takes us, then I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to ride with that as well. I love that, Marcy. I, and I, I think a part of it, you know, we keep talking about the self-awareness, um, just being aware of who we are. I know I, I, I was, I'm thinking about my devotional this morning and God sending me a reminder 
that I'm custom designed. He designed me just the way I'm supposed to be to fit perfectly, you know, in his plan. And so when I remind myself about, you know, that, that I'm, he, I was built and he, he took the time to build me just the way he wanted me to be. So if somebody can't handle that, then I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm aware of who I am and I just looking for that right person that, you know, is aware of who he is and his awareness and my awareness and what, and what we want, our morals, our values, um, and, and visions marry. And then that, that's where, you know, I think I will find that fulfilling relationship. Tanya, you said something earlier and I just wanted to pick up on that and that, um, and I have evolved in this area. And that is, um, you said something about is, you know, you were evaluating your last relationship and you said, it's what I allowed, right? Mm -hmm. Some, mm -hmm. some of, some of it was what you allowed. Uh, sure. And I think that, um, that's been the most important part of my journey in terms of dating, because I have allowed, I've been like, uh, okay, well, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe it's not so, but I, <laughs> Car is going to laugh at this, but I mean, my time period is even shorter, um, Car. I mean, because I will date someone and then, you know, you know, Car will call me and she'll be like, okay, what's that going on? I was like, oh, that's done. She's like, oh, Regina, it's over already. But it and and what a surprise, huh? <laughs> I said, what a surprise! It's over already. <laughs> well, but it it what it is is that I know that I'm not willing to settle, and when I see those things, and and it's interesting because just recently I have gone on some. I went on a very nice three or four dates with someone that Marcy, that I knew from back in my past. And um, we had a great time. It was great. It was, but there was one piece that I knew wasn't going to work. And I had to accept the fact that that wasn't happening. And so, you know, we just kind of, we, 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 you know, his mother got sick. And so we kind of fell off from talking or whatever, and we never picked back up. So he must have, he might have felt the same thing, you know, and I do think about him from time to time. And, you know, like I would, I mean, and our dating was very easy. Like he wanted to go for walks. He wanted to, you know, it was just whatever it was. And so it's interesting because I thought about calling him just to check on him or whatever. And this is what I do, because this is part of that pastoral, like, you know, let me check on him and see how he's doing. Then it starts a whole, you know, <laughs> um, spiral effect. And, um, but what I realize is that I just have to call with intention of this is a friendship and, you know, this is where it is and not to go back to, you know, talking every day and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, so just really when you re when you see those things and I'm not saying like, okay, one little thing and you're like off to the races and like, forget about them. But like, if there's something like, you're like, Hmm, okay, that's not going to work for me. So, and, and, you know, and one of those things that I hate to, I mean, and I say this, and no, I don't hate to say this because it is important to me. If you are not fellowshipping at a church, that is a problem for me. I don't care, I, and, and I'm, I'm not gonna even say a church. If you're not fellowshipping, if you don't have a fellowship in, a, in some faith congregation, it's not gonna work for me. It just is not. It just is not gonna work for me. So, and I mean, I don't have any bones about it. So go ahead, Jeanette, I'm sorry. All right, I got a question for you, Regina and Tanya. Both of you said you have had experience with um, coaches, dating coaches. So my question simply is, what were some of the things that you, maybe suggestions or tips or advice that the coaches gave you 
that you all found to be most helpful? You know, I, I'm gonna jump in because I think what Regina just said was kind of the advice that I was given. So I, I knew a woman who is a dating coach and she was like, you need help. And I was like, I need help. So she was like, I'm gonna help you. And um, as she was like looking through my profile and stuff, she was like, what are your deal break? Like, what is it that you need to have? What are your needs to have? And I was like, you know, I really need to have someone who I can have conversations with. So she was like, so that's a deal breaker for you. Like you want a man who's educated, who has at least a college degree. And I felt bad saying yes, right? Like I felt like, oh, does that make me a little, you know, elitist or snobby? And she was like, but you have to be really clear that you want to, if, if that's what's a turn on for you, like intellectual conversation, you have to be really clear about that so that, you, and you need to tell people and be clear with them. Um, so I would say that that was kind of a big, lesson for me because when I first started dating I just kind of went out on dates to like rip the band-aid off and um, I remember I went on a date with this guy who was very very young and um, you know I was like oh I'm just gonna go and see what happens so we go on this date and he's very intelligent we're having this great conversation but it turns out that he works at a he is an intern at a firm that my friend owns and I really I went into mentor mode right I was like well you know you really need to do this that and the other thing and I knew <laughs> that that was like a problem for me so when I talked to my friend who's a coach and I you know told her that um, situation she was like well you can't you can't date younger men, right? Like if that's gonna be who you turn into, right? You want a man who's accomplished. So I had to learn some of that on my own. Cause I, you know, the part of me that was like, I'm just gonna have fun. Um, then I was like, yeah, like fun for me, isn't being a mentor and a coach to my date. Although like, I'm sure it was fun for him. Like he got a lot of good advice I from it. <laughs> but you have to know, like, what are your deal breakers? Tanya, I think that's absolutely correct. My my coach went through the same thing, like total deal breakers, which is why that I know, you know, someone in a faith community is important to me. And I, I don't make any bone, I, I, I've tried, you know, and, and I just, I just, it just doesn't work, right? So it just doesn't work for me, so. I'm just curious, um, I was just sitting here thinking, so when you all were younger, I don't care, even, even you, Kayla, when you were younger, um, <laughs> did you date a lot? Like, did you go out on a lot of dates or did you date like one person and then that was it? And I'm just curious, like when you were young, I'm, I'm just wondering, I'm like, you know, were you a dater or were you more of a, I'm in a relationship and I'm dating one person and then I'll move on to this next person if that doesn't work out kind of thing. Yeah, I was always a one person, one person. I had lots of male friends, but I always dated one person. And because I had friends, then it was easy for me to find another person. <laughs> After that one ended, gotcha. I'll say the same answer as Jeanette about that. <laughs> Yes, I concur. You gotta have your starting five. I call them the starting but, five. five but, girl, I love that the starting five. But I will also I say that to go on a date with next. If the, my if my favorite mess up, you next, and you gotta let them know. You kind of gotta let them know real slick. Like you know, I like you a little bit, but not enough to give up the one I got now. That's you know, important to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's a, I would be say honest. it's important to be honest, no matter what. And I will say that so. Um, also younger, um, our lifestyles were different. And so, you know, because, you know, where I live and all the different organizations and the different activities, so easy to be around people and easy to meet people. You know, so we, came out of, we came out of college and we had a great network. We're still friends with that network all these years later. You know, we were involved in different activities. I've been active in my sorority. So it, it was so much easier. I mean, the events that we were going to were often and frequent and whether it was just the parties or whether they were black ties or whatever. So you were constantly meeting people all the time. So, um, you know, you made, for me, I probably dated folks um, one time in longer relationships, but then if that didn't work, then I dated, I mean, and I didn't get married till I was older. So it means I dated longer, um, you know, but there were, you know, there was a lot of, you know, like you said, there were friends. I don't, I don't know that was easier per se, and maybe it was, but, 
you know, we were just hanging out. So we were hanging out, having a good time all the time. All the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. But I married young too, so. Yeah. I was yeah. married young. Yeah, I was married young the first Adrian, time around too. Adrian, you all are too. quiet. I know, like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm here. I was gonna jump in um, okay. at some point, um, but <laughs> the dating game is new for me. Um, I think it goes back to what Cara said. Like when I was younger, I got married um, before and I was younger and then I got married again. And so in between time, I wasn't dating a whole lot. And then I was married for 16 years. And then um, after that, now I'm single. And so now trying to figure that all out has been something that I've really been working on. And um, I think everybody has said some of the same things that I've shared with my own my own personal circle is just trying to get to know Adrian. Um, and I think Jeanette said it like, I like Adrian. Like, she's cool. I feel like, you know, we're cool. I can go right now to the Ross and be happy and shop all night at the Ross. Because <laughs> it's so open right till 11. Now at 9 17. Right. right. It's open till 11. It um, opens at 11. So, right? <laughs> but I'm happy with me. And so uh -huh. it has been. Um, new for me the whole dating game but i have enjoyed just going out on dates getting to know people um it's funny i think um that tanya said trying to figure out where to go my things are you know having your list of where to go mine are having an outfit so when i do go out i'm big at car noses i'm like oh i'm not messing up a new outfit are you kidding <laughs> that's a cute outfit i'm gonna say that one um and so trying to get you know have that, that excitement of getting dressed and going out and just having fun. Um, and I feel like for me, it's been, I'm like that one hit wonder, like that one song that you, that you like, but you don't make any more songs. And I feel like my dating game has been like that. Like I, I might go out with you one time, you cool. But if I don't go with you a second time, uh, I'm okay with that. You know, maybe you're just not the right one. And so that dating game has just been a learning process for me. It's just learning again, having been married for 16 years, kind of starting all over again. It's just been a process, a learning process. So, but I'm enjoying it. And I'm, you know, I got a couple real cute outfits. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting. To, I'm trying to wait. I need to go to, you know, to the golf plays. I need to go sailing. I need to do all that. Um, but I'm, I'm just taking my time at the process. So. Allie. Can you guys hear me? Cause, yeah. Okay, good. Because the sound has been going in and out on my computer. I didn't know if, if I had a bad connection or anything. But yeah, I'm here to learn. I told Cara, I'm like, I'm not dating yet. I'm trying to prepare myself for 2022. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's been a while since I've like, been dating dating and I guess I just haven't been in the the mindset or the right frame of mind to date I just haven't been motivated to do it and so I know that and things and I'm learning a lot some of the stuff I know and that I've heard um you know getting to be really, I guess, focused on what some of my goals and non-negotiables and all of that good words. I'm telling you, I'm learning a lot tonight, but um, yeah, I'm, I think I want to date and I think I want a relationship, but I just haven't been motivated to do it. And so I said to myself next year, specifically, I'm going to try to shift my mindset and start getting out there. I did online dating years ago and it was like a job. I'm like, I can't come home from work and then get online. And then it was like another job. I'm like, this is too much. Um, and I know people, I haven't really used the app. Kudos to meeting your fiance on Tinder. Yeah, right. Because I know people who meet people on Tinder and I'm like, no, I don't want that, but maybe I should download uh -oh. tonight. <laughs> Listen, you so, never yeah. know where he's going to come from. That's you know? true. That's, so That's true. true. So, because you have to figure that 
men are on Tinder. Some men are on Tinder for the same reason that we may be, right? Not everybody is about a booty call. I shouldn't say it like that, but I mean, you know, because it, it, it because it has been, um, I guess sometimes it's felt like it's that way, but there are some, I've, I've met some nice people on Tinder and Bumble, some, you know, I mean, that want this, you know, same things that I want. It just, I was not fortunate enough like Kayla to meet her fiance. So, you know, but I did. That is amazing. So what are some of the good apps? Like if, if, if just for women and it might want to just get their feet wet. Anybody have any suggestions on so I've heard I've heard about Hinge. Somebody someone told me to use Hinge. Like that's a good one. Hinge is I, fun. I do Bumble. I mean Bumble is fun. Like it, it's I'm it's, it's it depends on what you you know, if you're looking for just a little fun. I've done Bumble. I did Black People Meet. That's a little. That's a little much. That's that's a little much. They got some real interesting characters on on uh, Black People Meet. And I've done um, E Harmony, and um, I, I wasn't. I didn't yeah, get so much. much. I didn't get a hit on that one that much. So, but I, I like Bumble. I've been on there for probably a couple months, and it's it's pretty cool. And Bumble match, is cool. match oh, is great. a good um, app. Match, match.com. Match, and I mean Facebook dating. I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not going to say that Facebook dating is not out of the picture, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I think that they, that you can possibly meet some nice people on Facebook. I mean, I think you can be, and and I look at online dating as when. We used to go out to the club. I mean, you know, back in the day. I mean, I did go to the club back in the day. But I mean, it's just like going to the club. You don't know that person. You don't know the person that's sitting at the bar. You don't know them. I it's never met anybody at the club. Huh? I never met anybody at the club, so that's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's well, always I mean, social, close, intimate circles of friends, college, friends of friends. It was never like going to the club. You yeah, meet I people really like not really at the club either. But I'm just, I guess I'm just saying that online dating is like meeting a stranger that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Out and if you're out at a restaurant and somebody comes up to you, or you're out sailing, or you're out golfing. Look, Adrian said golfing, or you're out golfing and you meet someone at the golf course. You don't necessarily know them. Mm -hmm. Online dating is a, but online dating will give you a, it'll give you a little bit of a buffer and a little bit of time to, to go through the process. That's what I think. I have a recommendation too. There's a woman, um, she has a podcast, a black woman. Her, I don't know her, her name is Franny, but I don't know what her last name is. And her podcast is Dear Franny. And she talks a lot about dating and online dating and strategies for dating. And I feel like it's a really good podcast to like start making you think about like what's going to be on your profile. What do you want to say about yourself? You know, um, so check out Dear Franny's podcast. Oh, that's good. I would say with online dating, when people like when people ask me like, is that a good app? I'm gonna be like, no. Like none of them are none of them are great apps. You got to know what you're getting into. Like when people say, is that a good bar? It's a bar. You know, it's, it's a bar. If, if it's a winery, it's a winery. It is what it is, okay? You got to use it for what it's for. Um, and, and, you know, just like when you're out, you got to filter. Everything, when you're out in person, you still got to filter just like you do online. And when I was online, I mean, though I might have met my fiance that way, I was on there for a long time. So I had to go through all these little frogs, honey, and all these ups and downs before, you know, anything that even made sense came along, you know, you're going to delete it. And then I'm going to be like, I'm, I was frustrated because I'm going on, on all these dates. I got on all these cute outfits and I still ain't found nobody, you know, and it's, it, it gets tiring. So you just got to know what the process is and be okay with it because it is what it is. It doesn't matter who it is. The process 
process is pretty much the same. And just have your filter on. And like we've been saying, know who you are, know what your red flags are. If that red flag pop up, they got to go. And just keep it moving, no matter where you meet them. So. I'm going to give a suggestion. I encourage if you're dating and you're doing any kind of dating, I encourage you to get a Google Voice number. Mm -hmm. And that's the number you give out until yeah. you are ready to move to the to, um, re to you ready to give the permanent number because the Google voice number, I don't have to answer, you know, my regular phone. I mean, I use it for so much business. Like I might have to, so I use the Google voice number. It's funny. I was talking to this, to a gentleman and he was like, Oh, he's like, am I going to get the regular number? I said, you have a number. You have a way to get in touch with me. That's, that's it. <laughs> yeah. all. And he still don't have a regular number. Yeah, that's enough. I, mean, <laughs> I know people who do that. I do know a couple of people who have a, a Google number. Well, that's the definitely to them move into like safety wise. Like when you go yeah. out on dates, like aren't there apps or something that can track you or something? I don't know. I, I can't remember. I just remember talking about something that you need. I just feel like we should talk about safety and. Look, the like app is called Good Good Girlfriends. Girl, I'm going to. Bye. <laughs> um uh cured at this time for this date and this is what he and i send pictures to my good yeah. girlfriends of who i'm going out with and yeah. give them his name give them their give them his name yeah and license plate i'm gonna say license plate number if you're getting in his car yeah yeah if i'm getting in his car yeah i, I don't i don't do the getting in the cars i'll meet you there I, it, it, I, I, we have to be dating for a while before I even let that barrier down. Nope, my car goes everywhere. Mm -mm. I'm with you on that one, Toya. Especially because if you're ready to leave, you need to be able to pull off. Yeah. You know, if you, uh -uh, I'm uncomfortable or whatever. I don't want to be stuck nowhere. So, yeah, I drive my own car too. Even to this day, even if I'm with my homegirls, I still drive my car. If I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. So has anybody, I mean, I know we've been talking about online dating and dating, but what about meeting people through friends? Has anybody had any instances recently where, like, is that a thing or people don't do that anymore? Everybody just goes online. And how do we encourage people to introduce women to their single friends? I had a, my line sister, who I'm close to, introduce one of her male good friends to another one of my um sorority sisters and um i saw them the other day and they are about the cutest couple like ever <laughs> and they've been dating like for two weeks i mean he's been to see your family i mean it's so cute and that was only because my last sister said hey i have a really good friend he's looking for just a partner to hang out with and she hooked him up and they have been inseparable and it's only been two three weeks now but i did see them and i'm like you it's, they just make a really cute couple and so i do feel like the best hookups are the ones that um are through a friend or friends because that person knows you and somebody can vouch for you when you're in the relationship, when you're in this bumble, you're just kind of out there. You know, nobody knows you or who you are. But if a friend introduces you, they can really vouch for you. I know this person, we've been together, you know, I know where they live, you know, it's real. Cause a lot of people are like, they don't want to be catfished or, you know, are you true or are you who you say you are? But through a friend, I feel like that works out so nicely. And I just saw that just recently with one of my line sisters, like, this is really cute. Now, on the other hand, I had another situation where my line sister started dating my cousin. And so <laughs> that's been an interesting, I didn't have anything to do with that. They were just together, but it's been six months and they're still um, going strong. So what can you say? You know, I was able to vouch for him and her, um, but it's worked out. So we'll see what happens. You might have a new cousin-in-law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that, ha that, ha that happened to me. I had my cousin, or well, my girlfriend showed up at the bowling alley and my cousin bowled and I said, don't, I looked at her and said, don't ask me to introduce you to him because you are not going to date my cousin. And she said, well, who, him? 
She said, we already been dating. I was like, oh, no, don't tell me that. And now they've been married for 10 years. So, wow. I know. So, I mean, so sometimes that works, but how do we get, like, how do we, like, a lot of people don't like introducing people to other people, but they may actually know really nice people. So, I don't know. I don't, I'm just thinking out loud, like, yeah. people, say people don't like to introduce, because it's like playing matchmaking, and then when it don't work, you don't want to be blamed for it. Right. But they know nice people. They might be nice to me as a friend, but being nice to your girlfriend or your boyfriend, that type of, like, getting to know someone in a relationship versus a friend is different. Like, she might be cool as my homegirl, but I don't know what she like as a girlfriend 24-7, you know? So if I'm going to hook you up, I'm going to give that disclaimer. Like, we have fun going to the bar. She cute. She go to work. You know, that's what I know. <laughs> if you like her, you got to go at your own risk. Because I don't want to be known for messing something up. But mm -hmm. you just never know. Your friend is still showing you a representative at the end of the day. No matter how nice or sweet or how well we get along, I only know them from the time I'm around them. I don't, I don't know them as you will in a relationship. So I try to stay away from that. <laughs> good point. Good, good point, Kayla. That's funny. Very good. I had somebody try to set me up recently and the gentleman and I communicated back and forth. So I'm bringing up one of these words for um, us ladies out in the dating scene and he ghosted me. Oh, so that's, that's one of the things. And so, it, you know, it was fine with me. I mean, we were just talking. It wasn't like, you know, I asked you to put a ring on it. Um, but so I wanted to bring that to the other ladies. Have you ever been ghosted? And how do you feel about that? Because that was um, the group I told you, Regina and I, and they posed lots of questions all day. It's very interactive. And um, seeing people's views about being ghosted, like my feelings were not hurt at all. I was like, okay, cool. I kept it moving. You you know, you were on the list. Um Mm -hmm. But I know, you know, some people like, you know, that's rude, that's this, that, and I'm like, at the end of the day, he had really no obligation to me. Um, we were, we just communicated by, you know, text and email. And if something else came up and that's what he chose, I, I, my feelings weren't hurt, but um, Regina, Tanya, Adrian, um, Allie, what you think about Ghost and Jeanette? Ooh. Single people. <laughs> well, I, I, I've been ghosted. Mm -hmm. Kayla? Um, okay. Yeah, I have. I, mean, I think, I guess I have been. I guess probably like you, Tanya, I was like, maybe it was, maybe I was ready. I was like, oh, okay. You stop calling? Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I was probably like that, maybe. Mm hmm. And maybe I didn't see it as a ghost because I was already like checking out anyway. Right, right, right. But, I mean, somebody that I really like. Well, actually, I did have I did have a guy that I met on Bumble that we were we we talked every day. We went out. We it it. I mean, it was like intense for like a month, and then all of a sudden. Just stop calling me. Stop responding to my texts. Stop. So that was a ghost. And I really liked him. He was, you know. So, yeah. So I was kind of like, hmm. You know. Yeah, um, I think after a month, that kind of, you kind of should have deserved some kind of little, it don't have to be long. Something. I don't understand why people, why it's so hard for people to say, if I'm, if I'm not, if it's not working, the connection doesn't work for you. I mean, I'm we're we're grown. Just say that, you know. This person, I that I mean, it it was a matter of maybe a week or two. Um, but if you were really engaging with somebody for a month, a couple of months, and then all of a sudden, it's crickets. You couldn't have just said, you know, this is not working out the way <laughs> I thought it was, or you know, you you're a nice person, but the connection is not really there. I wish you well. And I'm like, okay, well, wish you well. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what's so difficult about that. Mm -hmm. I think that's hard for people to say, like to 
it's like you're turning someone down. I, I don't think it's as easy as it, it just came out. It, it sounds easier than I think it is. Because I was a coaster. The one, the one that I remember. <laughs> yeah, the guy, I went out with this guy a couple of times and then, um, and he was out of state. He lived um, up north somewhere and, and he was coming down here one weekend, but he didn't try to make time to see me. I was like, oh, I guess this isn't going to work out anymore. He's like, no, I, I got to hurry up and get back. I'm like, really? You got to hurry up? You can't just meet me and say, hey, let's get a get a cool drink or something. <laughs> but that was the ghost. It wasn't like I'm just calling you. It was, oh, I got to get back. But then that was it. So. People, uh, it sounds like, I mean, I'm not going to do this to you, but it sounds like when sometimes don't want to be upfront about how they're really feeling. Yeah. And I know it can't, it's not easy. I mean, nobody wants to be rejected or be the butt of somebody's rejection. So I know it's not easy, but I, I mean, a, a text like nice meet me, but this is not working. I mean, but I mean, silence sometimes is the best answer. So ghosting, you know. I would think best. too, a lot of times it's a blessing in disguise, right? So, you know. Like you fabulous. So if the person is ghosting you, too bad for them. Absolutely. Absolutely, Jeanette. Because you are fabulous. So I would say it's a blessing. All right. I didn't hear from blah, blah, blah in a few days. Mm. <laughs> Shame on him or her. <laughs> right. So y'all have never ghosted anyone. Never. That's what I'm I, hearing right and now. A very, uh, I'm very upfront about how I you know what I mean? I will say to you, like, you'll know that I'm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. I've been on both sides and it wasn't I've, been on both sides too. I've got, got ghosted that I was like, Oh no, I'm not doing that no more because it was one that I really <laughs> like. But if I ain't like you, baby, it was nothing for me to just scooch you to the side. I just disappear. Just <laughs> be gone. You, you forget I'd be dust. Bye bye. But that's because I don't want to say hey whatever it really was because nine times out of ten i'm either really liking someone else you was really like the second or the third and if we get ghosted that's probably what we were or there was something really weird or strange about you and i don't want to be the person to tell you like every time i've been around you your breath stink so i'm not going to date you like i don't want to be that person and say that so I just disappeared and I gave it a chance. It just didn't work, but I was also taught and I don't have nothing nice to say. Just don't, just don't even say it. That's right. Okay. I love Michaela Jones points because she hits it right. She just knocks it out the park. She's like, I got this. Okay. It's just, it's the truth. I'm honest. I, I've done both and it's not right, but it is what it is. Sometimes it's just easier to just go quiet, go silent. So it's all about the connection you have with the person, I guess. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, the points I kept hearing that were be open-minded and, and uh, what? Oh, be focused on what your <laughs> deal breakers are or what you're looking for and get to know yourself. That's important. And um, any other, did I miss any other points? Have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. That's a big one. That's a big one. Have fun. That's a big one. And um, if you're on the edge of the pool, just call one of your good, good girlfriends. And yeah. Do it. <laughs> you had. Dating pool. I'm on my way, Jeanette. To push oh, me oh, in, right? Tanya, Tanya <laughs> Leslie, you got to you gotta push her in. Yeah, Marcy. I've been trying, but she's like holding on to things on the side of the pool. Oh my God, we're gonna have to cut our arms off or something. We're gonna have to double and triple team or Tanya. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And and uh I think that was pretty much all the good points. Oh, Allie too though. Allie too. Like we're gonna have to well, Allie said she's ready, she's getting ready to go for Oh, she's getting ready. Allie has on her bathing suit. I don't have on my bathing suit. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, Allie does have on her bathing suit. Yeah, she's getting ready. 
She said she's getting ready. So mm -hmm. there you go. Extra. <laughs> <laughs> so this this show number two on dating is you know I said to Cara like new beginnings in January people start the beginning of the year everyone has these you know declarations or just new beginnings new things that they want to try so this is all helpful this is like research this is prep work this is building the muscle and the strength you know to do that so yeah. we'll see what the new year brings and and be 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 sure that the good good girlfriends is going to have a show with the guys again because I do mm. want to get some I want to have Your that perspective dialogue yeah mm -hmm. sure. think about that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah for sure they said they wanted to come back anyway good, good guy friends they said mm -hmm. when are you gonna have the good, good guy friends on again we'll have them. oh okay we're gonna have them soon and and then i just want to bring up the point that dating is not just for single people once again dating mm -hmm. okay. you have to date your mate so you surely do to keep her that's right I, so dating is important for married people. You don't stop dating after you get married. And I've heard from, um, I, I remember hearing from one of my good, good girlfriends one time. She's like, well, you all are, you and Andre are always going places and doing things. And my husband never plans anything. And I said, 99% of the things that we do, I plan. Because I, I know what I want to do. And I, I make sure it's something I want to do. So mm -hmm. I, I, I said, is he willing to go? She's like, yeah, I'm like, no. What is the problem? I was like, if he's willing, why are you waiting for him to plan something? I mean, he he said he would go, and if you want to do something, don't wait for him. So, ladies, it's okay to plan dates. I mean, Andre does plan dates, so it is important that they do that. But if I want to do something, I'm planning it. So yep. don't wait for that. Date your mate. So um, yes, dating is an ongoing thing after you've been married, right, Cece? Yes, most definitely. There you go. And Marcy, <laughs> Marcy and everybody on, well, a few of you all on here have been married before, right? Ladies, married ladies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so before we leave, I want to ask and check in. We had, we were supposed to be going self-care in November. Did, how did self-care go? Did anybody focus on self-care in November? I didn't post every day like I did last year. I just wanted to see how you were working out on your own. Nobody did anything, yeah. huh? <laughs> something I did this I did better this year than I did last year when we did this challenge I did try to get in a little exercise three times three or more times a week so I did do it mm -hmm. very good well we we proclaimed that November was going to be our self-care good good girlfriend self-care month to focus on it but it's going to be a focus all year so all year. yeah so don't forget to check in on your self-care and Keep that up. So, but I think that's about it for tonight. I was hoping that Kayla would share her business with us once again. Kayla, can you oh, share? Oh, yay. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. My business name is Charmed Up by Kay. Um, I make customized jewelry, um, but I've kind of expanded to clothing and handbags and all the good stuff. So, I love fashion. I've always loved fashion. And it's kind of taken off in ways that I couldn't even imagine recently. So um, I make uh, custom bracelets, which I don't think I have one. That's not. <laughs> Your auntie has them. Tanya has them. Oh, does she have some on? Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, I put pictures, logos, butterflies, words whatever people I, I have I have someone asking me to make their mom is like a chef so I'm making this like chef inspired bracelet set um it just lets my creativity go through and have them for sororities and fraternity everything I have schools HB uh HBCUs I have done some for um uh, it's another group of women that get together and they're called the Fly Girls. So I did a special set just for everyone in the group um, that was over there. I, if, if if you want it and I can make it happen, I'm gonna do it. So I just have fun putting stuff together. I love being creative. Um, my necklace, so I do necklace and earrings. I have bangles on that I make. Um, one day I want to be the person that literally you can come to me head to toe and 
walk out with an outfit is the goal for me. So we're just on our way there. And I am on Facebook or Instagram. My website, everything is charmed up by K. So I am easy to find. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. How do you spell charmed up? I thought it was spelled differently, right? Then. It is. So charmed is C-H-A-R-M-D. Um, and it has the, apostrophe. what is that? Apostrophe. apostrophe. Thank you. It has the apostrophe in there and then it's up by K. So C-H-A-R-M apostrophe D for Charmed Up by K. Mm -hmm. And K is K-A-Y. K-A-Y, yes. Right. yes. Yeah. Tell them about your lives. Yes. So um, how it, my business has grown is I used to be all e-commerce. I um, mean, and I own only did online. I have a website um, and I would do pop-up shops, but now I am doing Facebook live because social media is our best friend if we know how to use it. And I just want to connect with people and I love interacting with people and talking if you haven't noticed. So um, <laughs> I like to get on the live and just be funny and be myself and show what I can put together. I love that people like some of the things that I pick, I like seeing, you know, the things that we end up having in common. So I am doing the lives right now. I'm doing a 17 day live-a-thon type situation where I'm going live every day with new merchandise that I have to offer to just show the range of what I provide and just to get my platform going the direction I wanted to go now with all the changes I have. So all my lives are on the Charmed Up by K page. Um, and if you're interested in seeing some of the products that I have, you can join in and I announce what time I go live every day. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for letting me mention my business. I appreciate it. Oh, we like every time we get together, we like this feature businesses. Anybody else? Tanya, do you have a business you could like to feature? Do you have a business? I well, I write children's books. Oh. So I have a few children's books online. I wrote a, uh, recently a book about Kamala Harris. I have one about John Lewis um, and Obama and Rosa Parks. And they're for about like first to third grade. So um, they're available on Amazon. Ah, and they search by your, the author your name. Mm -hmm. Awesome. These are all, you and Kayla are offering up some great Christmas gift ideas. Yes. So, Allison, Adrian, anybody else have a business they want to feature tonight? No? No? Okay, cool. All right. Well, this was absolutely fun. I'm so happy. I got to see a lot of my, my guests. Good, good girlfriends this week. I haven't seen and Tanya and so Tanya Robinson. It's so nice to see you back with us again. Thank you. So Kayla, Tanya, Adrian, Allison, thank you all so much for joining us. We have our after party after this. So if you want to stay for the after party, don't hang up. But uh, thank you all for joining us. We hope that everyone has a wonderful week, rest of the week and weekend and that hopefully we've been a blessing to someone out there. We hope you will jump in if you're single and looking for us um, forward to dating. We hope we offered up some good pointers. If you uh, need a partner or an accountability partner, the good, good girlfriends are always here to help. And so if you need to be pushed in to the pool and you need, we'll come right over and push you in. We'll set up your profile and push the button for <laughs> you. <laughs> Look, we'll take pictures. We'll take a picture with our cell phone, a good picture for you to post. And if you want professional pictures, Andre Dunstan has a nice video. <laughs> some professional shots done. So we can help you with everything. And anyway, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. And we'll be back in two weeks with another wonderful topic. We'll let you know what it is soon. But until then, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.